If you Google best camera for astrophotography, the top results that come up are, in my opinion, pretty poor. Big publishers putting out slightly random lists based on the author's or some intern's subjective opinion. I wanted to see if there was a source of objective data on this topic. Where I landed was the Astronomy Photographer of the Year competition. So this is the world's most prestigious astrophotography competition. Every year, thousands of images are submitted by the best astrophotographers in the world, and then about 100 or so are shortlisted as potential winners. Importantly, the information on the gear used in those shortlisted images is made available. I went through the last seven years of data, 2018 to 2024, to see what I could learn about cameras, lenses, telescopes, and other astrophotography gear. You can head to my website if you want the full analysis, but in this video, I'm going to focus specifically on cameras used for nightscape astrophotography. The most commonly used and successfully used camera model in the 2024 data is the Sony a7 III. You can see the top cameras here listed. This is just the 2024 data. The reason for that is if we go too far back on the models, you get some obsolete and fairly old cameras. But the older data is very useful for looking at the wider characteristics of astrophotography cameras. So if we look at the brands of the cameras used, 99% of the nightscape images shortlisted are taken with Sony, Canon or Nikon cameras. Now, if we just take that and look at mirrorless versus DSLR, you can really see that DSLR use is dying out. And this reflects a wider trend in photography beyond astrophotography. Mirrorless cameras have got better and more affordable. If you look at this chart, you can see 2022 was the year when mirrorless cameras overtook DSLRs and it's got more pronounced with each year. 2022 also coincides with when Sony took over as being the leading manufacturer, which makes sense because they were ahead for mirrorless cameras. Now, one key learning is that virtually all of the nightscape images shortlisted are taken with cameras with full frame sensors as opposed to crop sensor cameras. There are two reasons for this really. Firstly, full frame sensors perform better in low light condition, which is inherent for night sky photography. They also allow a wider expanse of the night sky to be photographed. So crop sensor cameras literally crop that smaller. The problem with this is full frame sensor cameras cost more, but we'll look more into that later. So is the Sony a7 III the best camera for nightscape photography? Not necessarily. In truth, there is no best camera for astrophotography. It's part of your setup along with other bits of gear, and there are many other factors that will determine whether you take quality nightscape images to do with planning, settings, timing, location, etc. We should also recognize the data has a couple of limitations. So there's an inherent time lag essentially. So even the most recent images won't be using the most recent cameras because the 2024 images. Would have been taken in 2023 and the 2023 images were probably taken with cameras that they were bought in 2022 or earlier so it's not necessarily going to have the latest models in there but secondly there's an inherent low cost bias essentially since a one thousand dollar camera is going to be more frequently used than a five thousand dollar camera because it's more accessible but this i think is a, a useful bias in a sense because it allows us to see the best value models that can deliver. There is a lot of evidence that the Sony a7 III is a great camera for astrophotography. This year we've put a lot of good new case studies on our website from some amazing astrophotographers and a solid chunk of them have been using the Sony a7 III. Now one final thing to note in terms of characteristics which actually doesn't come through from this data is that a lot of Advanced astrophotographers use what are called astro modified cameras. These are regular DSLR and mirrorless cameras that are put through a process whereby part of the infrared filter inside is removed and that allows the colors from certain astronomical objects to be better captured. This is a process that you can send your camera off to be done by a professional service or you can buy it pre done by this. But this is an advanced step which beginners probably don't really need to be thinking about. It's something that you might want to get onto later if you feel you've pushed the limits of your gear and capacities further. 
The reason I say we don't know the data here is because whether cameras are astro modified or not is not included in the astronomy photography data. But we did also look at the cameras used in the 2024 Milky Way Photography of the Year competition, which is run by a website called Capture the Atlas. When we looked at it, of the images shortlisted, three quarters used astro modified cameras. And also to give some more uh, support to what we've already found, the top camera being used was, guess what, the Sony a7 III. So bringing this all together, you can narrow down the characteristics of the best cameras for nightscape photography as Sony, Canon, Nikon, full frame sensor, probably mirrorless, possibly when you get to an advanced level, Astro modified. So top models, Sony a7 III, as I've shown, really up there. There's a newer version. The latest iteration is the Sony a7 IV, if you want to consider that. The Sony a7R5 is also right up there. That's a more premium, high resolution model. The Nikon Z6 II is a very popular camera and done very well. That has a new iteration as well with a the Z6 III, and that also includes a starlight view mode, which is specifically to help you focus in night sky photography. If you have a, a preference for Canon models, for instance, like the, the lenses you own, or you're familiar with the, the menu system, then the EOS R8 is recommended. That's probably what we'd also recommend as the cheapest full frame camera, full frame mirrorless. So that's a good option if you're looking for a budget option. Now, if you really want a budget option, you want something, say, between $500 and $1,000, your best bet is to look at older full frame models, possibly on the used market. In my opinion, that's a better option than going for a new APS-C crop sensor camera. Just finally, many thanks to Royal Museums Greenwich, who run the Astro Photography of the Year competition. If you're in the UK or coming there at some point soon, you can go and see the exhibition for free. It's great. I've been there. If not, you can buy the book, which includes all the photos and all the information about the photos. It's a great way to learn about astrophotography since you get all the gear and all the settings used so you can understand better how, how all the different types of astrophotography. There's also a 2025 calendar, which you can buy all links to all the products and all the content used in this video below. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know below and please also like and subscribe.